Today we are going to discuss an underutilized setting in AGI 32 that all users should know about. It's called Adaptive Subdivision. This is a super simple function, from a user perspective anyway, that can make a huge difference in your visualizations when you have luminaires close to surfaces. Let's take a look at a simple room with a row of recessed down lights against one wall. They're two and a half feet away and five foot apart. Looking at the adjacent wall in AGI 32's render mode, we can see the underlying radiosity mesh. Without going into complicated detail, red polygons are elements, or receivers of light. Blue polygons are larger and hold a collection of elements. They are called patches and are emitters or virtual luminaires in the calculation process. Notice this blue polygon holds four red squares. Calculate the results. And if the mesh is too coarse, you will not see an accurate gradient of luminance across that surface. Keep in mind, the illuminance on the work plane or floor is accurate, but the wall mesh has been optimized for the work plane, or floor result, and not for the wall itself. This is done to avoid penalty and runtime when you are only interested in the horizontal illuminance results. AGI 32 automatically does a subdivision of the patch mesh to ensure accuracy. However, this does not increase the number of elements, which improves luminance gradient. Notice the wall is mostly blue polygons now, so we have patches and elements in a one-to-one -one relationship. It is possible to modify both patch and element mesh using surface edit, but it can get complicated. All that said, for many applications there's a much easier way to refine the mesh. Simply pull down the Calculate menu and select Adaptive Subdivision. The default settings are often all you need. Adaptive subdivision refines the element mesh. Remember elements are receivers of light. So adding elements, subdividing them, has the effect of improving the accuracy of the luminance gradient on the surface. The rules by which this process is applied are from the bottom up. Element luminance threshold setting of 1.5 means if the adjacent element is 50% brighter, subdivide. A minimum element area setting of half a square foot means do not subdivide smaller than half a square foot. A maximum subdivision level of 3 sets the number of subdivisions that will happen regardless. In this case, subdivide three times and stop. So let's enable the checkbox and calculate again using the default setting. This is a marked improvement in the wall luminance gradient with a very small change in work plane illuminance. Let's take a quick glance at the numbers. The average change from 18.31 to 18.61, 3 tenths of a foot candle. The maximum went from 62.2 to 62.8, a little over half a foot candle. And the minimum went from 0.4 to 0.5, a tenth of a foot candle. And that's most likely less as we're displaying only tenths. Remember, this is an interior application where typically only whole numbers are relevant, and we are only looking at the lighting along one wall, so the back half of the room is relatively dark. Turn on the mesh to see how the element distribution has changed. Remember the settings. If an adjacent element is 50% brighter, subdivide. Don't make any element smaller than half a square foot, and stop after three subdivisions. The net effect is one of subdividing areas where the luminance gradient is greatest. Let's open the Adaptive Subdivision dialog one more time. We could move the setting to high. What does that do? Well, let's look. Adjacent elements only need to be 10% brighter to subdivide. Elements can be as small as a tenth of a square foot, and we can subdivide five times before stopping. This setting is generally overkill and may have an adverse effect on runtime. It's generally intended for direct solar penetration in daylight settings. So let's look at an easy trick that can refine the mesh even further with generally no penalty in runtime. Back to the default setting and let's change only the minimum element area in square feet. Make it two tenths instead of five. Leave everything else as is. Using this trick, we will avoid stopping the process prematurely due to element size, but we will stop at three subdivisions and use the same adjacent brightness rule. Calculate again. Wow! 
This looks even better. Notice the numeric results did not change. 18.61, 62.8, and 0.5. That's identical to the previous setting. Looking at the wire overlay, you can see the results are dramatic. And that's the lesson of adaptive subdivision. Use it whenever you have luminaires close to surfaces. This means indirect lighting, recessed lighting like this, wall-mounted luminaires, which sometimes may require even more detailed meshing, and daylighting as well. The net result is a better visualization with typically only a small runtime penalty. Give it a try.